Hello and welcome to the Natin Technical Skills Acquisition Program. The name is Komoton Adi Samo, a doctor of electrical and electronics engineering. The topic we'll be looking at today is electrical house wiring. The first thing that comes to anybody's mind is what is electrical house wiring? Electrical house wiring in general refers to insulated conductors used to carry currents and its associated devices. This lecture describes general aspects of electrical wiring as it provides power in buildings, structures, commonly referred to as building wiring. There are three major types of wiring according to users. We have the domestic wiring, we have the commercial wiring, and we have the industrial wiring. Now, what are the factors to consider when choosing the type of wiring for your house you would want? Basically, there are seven factors you have to put into consideration when choosing the type of wiring, either for a building, an industry, or a workshop. The first factor we will be looking at is durability. Does the wiring you are about to use meet up to the required standard of wires to be needed to wire that house or that building? Two, we will be looking at safety, the safety of the wiring, the protection against shock. How well have you been able to wire these wires so that we don't have breakages or shock? Three, we will be looking at the appearance of the wire. How detailed is the wire? Are your wires just hanging everywhere or hanging where people will just step on them? and get shocked. Thirdly, we will be looking at cost. We are looking for efficient wiring of a building at a minimized cost. The fifth item we will be looking at as a core factor for the choice is accessibility. So the sockets you have provided. Where are the sockets you provided? If you wear a house and the socket has to be by the bed stand, you should start thinking of putting sockets where people can get access to them and get them used for what they want. The sixth we'll be looking at is the maintenance cost. After wiring a house, if the house eventually has any wiring problem, what will be the cost to maintain? Lastly, we'll be looking at the mechanical safety. The wiring must be protected against any mechanical damage. These first are the seven very, very important things you have to note in the choice of wiring a house. Now, I will take you through the five major types of wiring. Firstly, we'll be looking at the cleat wiring system for houses. What is the cleat wiring system? This system uses insulated cables, sub-protected in Pauline cleats. We have two wires coming in, we have them inside the cleats with the screws holding down the cleats so that the wires can have a clear passage. Cleat wiring is recommended only for temporary installations. The cleats are made in pairs having bottom and top halves. The bottom half is grooved to receive the wire and the top half is for cable grip. Initially, the bottom and top cleats are fixed on the wall loosely according to the layout. Then the cable is drawn. Tension and the cleats are tightened. By the screw, cleats are of three types, having one, two, or three grooves, so as to receive one, two, or three wires. Cleats wiring is one of the cheapest wiring considering the initial cost and labor and is most suitable for temporary wiring. You don't use good wiring for permanent wiring. This wiring can be quickly installed, easily inspected and altered when not required. This wiring could be dismantled without the damage of cables, cleats or all the accessories you have used to put together this wiring system. The next image you're looking at is the picture of a three groove cleat. Remember I said we have three types of cleats, the one cleat, the two groove and the three groove cleat. This picture is showing you a perfect example of a three groove cleat. Beside it is the picture of a base with a groove. Now we'll be looking at the attributes of cleats. First and foremost, all cleats shall consist of two parts, a base piece and a cap. Cleats 
shall be fixed at distances not more than 60 centimeters apart at regular intervals. When this wire is laid along an iron joist, popcorn heads should be inserted either at vanished wood fillets or vanished wood clamps. Now, this should be securely fixed so as to prevent the conductors from coming in contact with metal along which they pass. Secondly, fixed cleats. In ordinary cases, cleats should be attached to wooden plugs fixed to the wall. Distance apart of the wires is quite a very, very important attribute of the cleat. Now, for pressure up to 250 volts, cleats with such dimensions, that is in case of bridge loads, conductors shall not be less than 2.5 centimeters apart. Center to center, and in case of sub mains, not less than 4 centimeters apart. Now, for you to be able to install a cleat wiring system in the house, it is very paramount and necessary that care should be taken that these grooves and cleats are essentially different in size. Secondly, care should be taken to ensure that grooves of pocket cleats do not compress the insulation nor too wide for a loose fit. When installing a cleat wiring system in a house, make sure that the insulation between the wires are properly spaced so that you don't have a problem with the circuit system. Under no circumstance, under no circumstance will two wires be placed in one groove or a puckling cleat. Cleats have two grooves, one that takes the wire and the other that holds the insulator. So under no circumstances, in wiring houses with cleat system, should two wires pass through the same groove. One groove goes to one wire. If you need another wire to come in, you go to the three groove wiring system. Now we'll be looking at the advantages of the cleat wiring system. One, easy installation. I have stated it. It is quite easy to install. All you need is a wooden cleat with the grooves and the two wires. The cleat wiring system is quite the easiest type of wiring installation. Materials can be retrieved for reuse. This is a very, very important advantage of the cleat wiring system because all the materials you used from the cleats to the wires and the screws can be retrieved and reused for another temporary installation. Three, flexibility provided for inspection, modifications, and expansion. Now, take for instance, if you have a two cleat groove that you've used to wire, if there is need for an expansion and you need to move to a three groove cleat, all you have to do is to get another cleat that has three grooves and you run your wires through it and you can provide electricity for that building. Four, it is relatively economical. It is the cheapest type of house wiring for a temporary connection that can be used. Three, skilled manpower is not required. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to run the cleat wiring system. With these steps we have given, you can quietly get a clean cleat with the number of goods you'll be needing and run your wiring system. Now, as it is with anything that has advantages, it must also have disadvantages. What are the possible disadvantages of the cleat wiring system? One, we have, firstly, the appearance is not good. The cleat wiring system does not give you a wiring system with neat ends and everything clipped up together. You only have a cleat with the number of grooves you've chosen and your wires running through. Open system of wiring requiring regular cleaning. Due to the open system of wiring, for the cleat wiring system, the wires are open. So it requires that you clean and dust these wires for rust so that it doesn't affect the connectivity of your circuit. Three, higher risk of mechanical injury. Due to the fact that these wires 
on the cleat, both of them are tightened and fitted, fitted on with screws that are metallic. So it is very, very necessary to note that this is a very, very vital disadvantage of the cleat lighting system. In this session, we'll be looking at the metal sheeted or the lead sheeted type of wiring for houses. What is the lead sheeted or the metal sheeted type of wiring for houses? The wiring is similar to that of the CTS, but the conductors two or three are individually insulated and covered with a common outer lead aluminium alloy sheet. Now, this type of wiring allows you to cover the wires you run through with aluminium sheeting or lead sheeting. And that is why it is called metal or lead sheeted mode of wiring. The sheet protects the cable against dampness, atmospheric extremists, and mechanical damages. Now, once these wires are sheeted, it protects it against dampness, which can cause electric shock. It protects it against atmospheric extremes. All these are external factors that can affect the wiring of a building. The sheet is added at every junction to provide a path to ground for the leakage of current. Now, because of current leakage, these sheets are added at every junction so as to prevent the leakage of current. So every junction where the wire breaks off to another junction, it is added there so that the leakage of current can be greatly minimized. They are fixed by means of metal clips or wooden buttons. The wiring system is very expensive and it is suitable for low voltage installations. Now, we are looking at a wiring system that is essential and very important for low voltage installations. What are the necessary steps you need to take in installation of the metal or the lead sheeted wiring system? 1. The clips used to fix the cables on buttons should not react with the sheet. You should not in any situation use metal clips. Aluminium clips are the best clips to use for metal or lead sheeted coating which is a very, very good wiring system for low voltage buildings. Don't forget that. Secondly, lead sheet should be properly aired to prevent shock due to current leakage. As I have earlier stated, every junction has to be aired properly in case of current leakage to prevent shock. Thirdly, Cables should not run in damp places or in areas where chemicals may react with the lead. For the fact that these wires are lead coated means there could be a chemical reaction if it comes in contact with the chemical that it can react with. So as much as possible, in the lead or metal coating or sheet for wiring of a house, try as much as possible to ensure that these wires do not come in contact with any liquid or chemical that could react with the lead. Now, the first thing that comes to your mind is what are the advantages of the lead sheeted wiring system? The advantages of the lead sheeted wiring systems are, and I state, one, easy installation and is aesthetic in appearance. As long as you know where the junction box is and you pick your current from there, all you have to do is to ensure that all the, at every junction, clips are put to avoid current leakage, to avoid shock. Secondly, it is highly, very, very durable. The lead sheeted wiring system is a very, very durable wiring system. Thirdly, suitable in adverse climate conditions provided the joints are not exposed. Like I said, once the joints are properly clipped and aired, the lead sheeted wiring system is a very, very good wiring system for extreme climate conditions. What are the disadvantages? Skilled labor is highly required. If 
if you get a technician or somebody to wire your house and this person doesn't have the skilled labor to do the lead sheeted wiring systems, all the precautions I have mentioned above will not be properly taken care of and this can lead to shock and one of the precaution to take in wiring a house is safety which you must not forget secondly it is quite expensive because you have to get clips you have to get wires and you have to at every junction lastly is unsuitable for chemical industries remember we stated that one of the factors to consider before having a house or a building lead sheeted for the wiring purpose is the accessibility of this wire coming in contact with any chemical. So for chemical industries, the lead sheeted or the metal sheeted wiring system is not a suitable wiring system. Next, we will be looking at the conduit wiring system, which has come to become one of the most used wiring systems for housings and for industries at large. In this system, the PVC or the VIR cables run through metallic or PVC pipes. First is what is a PVC pipe? It's a polydino chloride pipe that the wire runs through to prevent it from being on the surface. Even if it is on the surface, the PVC wires are run through the wall linings so that the wires run through them and it prevents shock or any other thing from getting to, to the wire. They are either embedded inside the walls or supported over the walls and are known as concealed wiring or surface conduit wiring. It is either the PVC pipes are run through the wall from the inside and the wires run through the PVC pipes in the wall or it is run on the surface. So the one that runs on the surface is called the surface conduit wiring, while the one that runs through the walls of the building is called the PVC, the polyvinyl chloride wall wiring system for the conduit wiring system. Now, the system is best suited for public buildings, industries, and workshops that I have stated. The picture we're looking at is a picture of a PVC conduit wiring system where you can see the PVC pipe running through the wall, clips to the wall and the wires, both live and negative, run through the PVC wire. Now, what are the advantages of the PVC or the conduit wiring system? First and foremost, no risk of fire and good protection against mechanical injury. Due to the fact that the wires are run through a pipe or through a surface pipe protection, now it has reduced the level of shock or mechanical injury to a minimal level. Secondly, we have the lead and return wires can be carried in the same tube. Now, the P of VC or the conduit wiring system allows us to run both live and negative wire through the same pipe, and this still avoids the bridging of both wires, which is a very, very good advantage of the conduit wiring system. Earthing and continuity is assured. For the mere fact that this PVC wire is polyurethane protected, is used to do the etting for the live and the neutral wire. So. This method of house wiring helps you to have perfect etting for a wiring system of a building. Four, waterproof and troubleshooting is easy. Now, the PVC, the polyvinyl chloride casing, protects this wire from dampness, chemical reactions, or what have we. It is a very important advantage of the conduit wiring system. Five. Shockproof with proper etching and bonding. For the mere fact that the PVC wire, the wire runs through the PVC casing, it protects and prevents shock. Now, the risk of shock is reduced 
to a very, very minimal level. We can say at this level of conditionality that we have zero shock level to maintain. Durable and maintenance free. Now, the PVC or the conditionality system is totally maintenance free. It is a one off thing. Once you use it to wire a building, there is no need for maintenance. And in case of any problem, or there's a wire bone somewhere, it can be easily be traced out because it's already in the casing and you can always know the junction or the joint from which the circuit is broken. Lastly, it is aesthetic in appearance. It has the most wonderful appearance. It removes all wires that will be dangling around your walls and gives the house a very, very fine fitting. What are the disadvantages of the conduit wiring system? One, it is cost efficient. Quite expensive, but very, very durable. Quite expensive, but very, very durable. Now, secondly, it requires skilled labor to run. You need somebody with the required skills who knows the required standard of wires to run through a PVC or a conduit wiring system to run your wiring system for you. Three, erection is quite complicated and it's time consuming because you have to pick your junctions, you have to pick your points. So if you get somebody who is not skilled and he doesn't know at what junction he's supposed to have a bend or a cut, it might lead to a wrong wiring of the house and it will affect one of the factors of wiring a house which is safety. Lastly, is the risk of short circuit under wet conditions due to condensation of water tubes. Now, since these PVC pipes are going to be running through the walls, where the water pipes that bring water to the house run through, there is a very possible risk of getting dampness or water come in contact with the wires. If at all, anywhere in the PVC pipe is broken, this water can get in through it and affect the circuit of the house. Thank you very much. With this, I have come to the conclusion of this session. I hope you join me on the next session where we'll be looking at the accessory devices for the proper wiring of a house.